Hello everybody, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. It's been a very, very long time. Yes, I know, I've been busy. I've actually been writing these mortgages. I'm just not, I'm not just a YouTuber. I actually write this stuff. So when you make an inquiry on our website, I actually get in touch with you. I actually talk to you guys. I actually do what I'm saying I'm doing. So, um, and it's been really, really interesting. We've been very busy and I'm gonna to talk to you about what's going on right now on the residential, on the buy to let, as well as the commercial side of things to give you an update and really to prepare you to what's going to come. Many of the things that I've said would happen are happening and are going to happen. So um, hopefully uh, we can have a inside track into the UK mortgage market. Right, um, so let's talk about the residential side of things. Right, so obviously we've got the ONS figures, which is the Office of National uh, Statistics figures coming in into the lenders calculators. What that means is in the olden days you used to put, I don't know, 150 pounds, 200 pounds utilities cost and, and um, um, uh, various things. Now, they're, they're obviously taking that data from the Office of National Statistics. So when you used to put 150 pounds for utilities, gas, and I don't know, electricity, now it's going in at 400 or 500. So that's having an effect on affordability. Yes, lenders have done some adjustments behind the scenes. However, it is affecting affordability. I'm also seeing, and, and in, in, a, in a way, I'm actually pleased to see this, I'm having more conversations with people that are saying, I do will not want to pay beyond this amount, Payam. Can you make it bring it up to £1,200 a month on my mortgage? Can it be £1,500 a month on my mortgage or £500 a month on my mortgage? So that tells me that they're budgeting, they're thinking about things. Um, they're not having to be guided by me always to budge, you know, think about budgeting, think about your costing. They've already got a spreadsheet somewhere. They've already made some calculations somewhere. And that's really useful because um, in this environment, you've got to know what you're paying, what your costs are, what your fixed term costs are, what is your luxury luxury cost, what is your disposable income, what can you take a hit on, um, what your bonus figures are, for example, for the last two years. So do all of that because it's important because that's that's the difference, okay? There is a difference of knowing, I'll give you an example. I had one today, a uh, client only been paid bonus one year, okay? So out of the lenders that we had, the high streetish lender, only one or two of them will accept that. Most lenders want to see an history of two years on bonus, okay? Unless it, that's an, on an annual bonus. If it's on a quarterly or um, or a monthly bonus, that's fine. They're you know, we need to know that. So it's really important you get your paperwork right. You know, you've got your budgeting sorted out. You know what you're earning, what your bonus is. If you're going to get a pay rise in the next couple of months, that's useful. Many lenders now will accept a pay rise in the next three months for example so if it's within three months employers letter generally on a letterhead saying this is what they're doing this is what they're going to be doing these are the terms of the the deal uh, and they could they should be able to use it so things like that come into effect finding out what type of property you're looking to buy is it help, well help to buy is going we'll talk about that but service charges for example that's important if it's shared ownership you need to know about the rent you need to know about service charges and all the bits and pieces so be prepared when you're having a discussion with me don't just have a discussion with me and then 10 other brokers absolute waste of time okay because it's just going to, we're just going to be talking waffle right so what i like to do is I, i'll send out an inquiry form to everybody and I want that completed as best as you can because that gives us the roadmap of what we're going to do, what we're going to purchase, how we're going to do it, what is your pension contributions, what is your credit card limits, and all the all the other bits and pieces that we need to know about. Um, right. So affordability uh, still major major factor. Some weird things going on with the residential market. Obviously, the rates are not great. Um, I still think lenders are just worried about what's going to come. They don't, they've got their nervous, so they're pricing themselves quite high. Um, not much difference between a two-year and a five-year fix, for example. Okay, so that's really interesting. Um, so not much difference between a two-year and five-year fix. Um, we will see an emergence of tracker rates come in. At the moment, I don't think they're great, um, but we will see that. Offset mortgages, we'll see some of those. So think about those. Think about, do some research, see what offset's all about. Um, the fundamental issue that you're going to have is uh, additional borrowing so a lot more additional borrowing coming in applications coming in um, and there's a couple of things people need to be aware of right majority of the lenders out there if you are your term is coming up uh, normally you can't get a new mortgage out of them for three months before 
okay now lenders have started tweaking with that so if you've got an existing mortgage you now be able to some lenders will do four months before so you could go in and get a new rate four months before so you can we can do it or you could do it yourself uh, there are a few that have come out and said we'll do it six months before like Barclays Barclays come out and said we'll do it uh, six months before so that's useful sometimes it gets a bit messy because you have to borrow so say you're on a 300k mortgage and you want to borrow another 50k for home improvements then it gets a bit messy rather than remortgaging if you stay with the existing lender honestly it's a really really clunky way they do it okay I don't think they've got it quite right yet all of a lot of the lenders when you're looking to do further borrowing when you're staying with the lender I think it's a little bit clunky and and, and I'm nervous sometimes when I recommend this for clients we have to you know we do it for on behalf of clients but I'm a little bit nervous because their processes and the way they work are clunky different lenders have got different rules but I found that sometimes although you're staying with a lender if you're looking to additionally borrow things can get more complicated than a remortgage so we have to look at that and that's what a job of a broker does we look at and see like, what are the benefits of doing this yeah you don't have legals you don't have um, solicitors involved uh, you may have a cert survey but sometimes you don't however you might have that on the remortgage but is it a cleaner end result um, so a lot of that a lot of that going on remortgages capital raising um, debt consolidation big big thing at the moment um, uh, around debt consolidation got to be really careful around debt consolidation there's lots and lots of ways basically there's not many ways where you can save money and put in your credit cards on, onto a mortgage um, because short term uh, it may sound like a good idea but longer term it could be difficult so um, you've got to really think strongly about debt consolidation uh, and obviously get some proper professional advice around that um, on the buy to let's gone a bit mad right first of all you've got some really big buy to let lenders not offering five-year loans um, Kent Reliance being one of them at the moment they're not offering five-year fixed now you've got to remember normally you can borrow more on a five-year rather than a two-year okay so that's playing with hey you know playing all, all over I mean the whole market as I mentioned to you and I did a video and I'll leave it here last time and I was talking about how lenders fund themselves how do lenders get this bank uh, sorry get this money that they lend to you that could be from the banks that could be from the money markets and what's the difference between a specialist lender and some of the high street lenders that you know of what's the difference between these lenders and now we're seeing this come through because we've seen the specialist lenders some of them withdraw certain products okay Kent Reliance being one of them buy to the lender no five-year fixed okay and now Kent Reliance is being used heavily by um, new landlords people that are looking to get lump limited companies things like that doing redevelop development and then looking to exit on a buy to let mortgage well that was a big option for a lot of people because they were very good on criteria well right now they've only got two-year fixes um, you are seeing things happen on uh, uh, on rental calculation before you you know the the way it worked is the high street the better price lenders would not lend you as much so you always went to a specialist lender to borrow more now what's happening is the specialist lenders because of the way they're funded and because it's so expensive and the way they have to run the rental calculation they're actually not giving you that much more than what the high street lenders are giving you so why are you paying for maybe five thousand or ten thousand or fifteen thousand pounds one and a half percent more or a hell of a lot bigger fee more importantly if it's a limited company from a, a non-standard lender to a standard lender now obviously granted limited company is a bit of a bad ex uh, example because generally all limited company business tends to be done on the uh, specialist lenders but there is a uh, there is a definite uh, gap between the high street guys and um, and the non high street guys and I think the high street guys are actually better value now uh, from a loan amount as well as the rate and, and product uh, amount so interesting side there we've seen a number of building societies come out of the market on the white left we saw Coventry come out of the market for a couple of weeks and they're massive I mean I think they're the second or the third biggest building society in the country and we've seen a number of other building societies withdraw products that's all to do with funding that's all to do with service levels they're playing it as systems and service levels fundamentally I think that's got to do with funding and where, where they don't want to commit themselves to a big five-year fixed on a very cheap rate so that's that 
Commercial, Interbay, which is, funny enough, a sister company of Kent Reliance. They've actually just, um, I sent them an inquiry about a deal. Um, I think their minimum loan, size, minimum loan size used to be 150 or 200K. So a lot of the smaller stuff up north, you know, in the Midlands, you know, if it's uh, a semi-commercial, maybe it's got two flats and a shop underneath and stuff, that wouldn't have been a huge value. They've come back, sent me an inquiry back saying, sorry, we can't place the deal because we've got a, uh, we've got a minimum loan size because of our service levels and so forth. Minimum loan size of a million pounds. So that's basically saying we don't really want to lend. Uh, yeah, if you send us the three million pound deal, we'll look at it. But below that, we don't want to lend. So that's really, really important. That's a big telling sign about the commercial side of the market. And another one, I had a rejection on a development finance loan today for a client. And this has been ongoing, you know, for a couple of weeks now. Send us this, send us this document, send us this. How they're going to do this, how they're going to repay the loan, what's, what are the costs. And they've just come back and said, look, we're not, we're, we're not confident the client can do what they can do. And, on, and all the costs that they're saying, they can get it at this price within this market. That just tells me everyone's really, really nervous. And for them to pull out of this deal, uh, where they originally said they will do it, it's just um, another sign of the market of the lenders being nervous. And it's not great for anybody. It's not good for the residential guys, the buy-to-let guys, or the developers when lenders start getting nervous because they get insecure. Lenders are like small little children. They get very insecure. When they get insecure, they get nervous. And what happens is then they get nervous about you as the client. Okay, although you've got a track record or although you've been paying it, they get nervous with you. So what do they do? They will try to stem the tide of business, but they still want to continue. They still need to make money. So they'll start cherry picking. There are some certain lenders that I know um, over the years, guys. And I'll tell you what, they've got probably one of them has got really good rates normally on the buy to let front. They're always up there. But I hate using them. I absolutely hate using them because... And sometimes I've lost business to this lender because they've been quoted by other brokers. And the reason for that is if it's not a very, very good, clean case, they'll just cherry pick it. Or better or worse, they will have, they've got their own value so they can down value it as well. Now, I'm not saying they, they will do that purposely, but they do cherry pick. I know that for a fact. They've cherry picked for many, many years. And if it's not what they want, which is fair enough. That's what lenders have put their things out. But what they do is with that rate, they will attract, a, they've got a big net. They'll attract a lot and then they'll push a lot out. And I, frankly, I don't think that's the right way I want to be working with my clients because I don't really want to say to them, yep, yeah, this lender will do it. And then they knock them back and go somewhere else. So there are, that's going to come in more and more now, especially with the price of lending. So we've got applications that went in at one and a half percent less say four months ago, have been offered, those lenders are dying. They're praying that that deal doesn't complete. Um, although they've got the funds from elsewhere, but it's going to cost money. So it is interesting. And, and I think we just keep an eye out on things in this channel. Um, still getting a lot of inquiries. There's still, you know, business is still booming, but there are signs that things are slowing down. Certainly when I'm having discussions with people, those those conversations that we're having is around affordability, is around whether it's rental calculation, if it's buy to let, or actual affordability around cost and so forth. So that's about it really. That's an update of September. The kids are back in school. I'm looking slimmer. I've been on a major diet for the last four or five months and I've lost close to 17 kilos, which is, uh, I don't know, two and a half stone. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a sort of a health trip um, because I was diagnosed with uh, type two, di uh, um, type two uh, diabetes. Um, and thankfully I've uh, seemed to have reversed it uh, and I'm in remission at the moment. So uh, yeah, so, so far so good. But um, yeah, there's a lot more going on with me personally as well. Thank you so much. Take care, all the best. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.